Hello and welcome to my channel. As you all know, to make a sustainable living, we have to eliminate the need for fossil fuels we are currently using in our day-to-day -day lives. For cooking, so far, the gas stove has been the go-to method because of its convenience and ease of controlling the temperature. We have all thought of using the sun's heat directly to cook our meals, but the worst part there is to stand in the hot sun waiting for your meals to cook. So today, I'm going to show you how to do solar cooking from the comfort of your kitchen using a device more convenient and efficient than your gas stove, that is, the induction cooker. In this video, I'll give you a brief overview of induction cookers, test its performance at different power levels, and finally, test it on my small solar setup to see how it functions and whether our supercapacitors will help in this situation. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell so that you won't miss out on any of my future videos. Okay, now let's talk a bit about the induction cooker. This is a wonderful gadget. It has a copper coil inside here, which produces a magnetic field. And that magnetic field induces heat within the pan. This is an iron pot. There's nothing special about it. As long as a magnet will attach to it, it's going to work. And the efficiencies, the energy to heat efficiencies here have been recorded in the 85 to 95% range. There is no loss of heat like in a gas stove which heats the air around it and in the other electric cookers. This uh, surface gets hot but in the induction cooker this surface doesn't get hot you can just touch it. Only the pan, only heat is induced within the pan nowhere else so because of that the efficiencies are very high and there's no toxic gas involved. If you're using solar power, there's, you're not using any fossil fuels either for cooking. And cleaning is very easy. This is a glass surface, this doesn't get hot, so whatever food spills doesn't get burnt. You can just wipe it off. And if you see the controls, this is very easy. Just with a touch of a button, you can go from high to low instantly. Just like a gas stove. Okay, so now I'm, I'll do a demonstration. In this pot I'm, I'm going to boil around 500 milliliters of water and for this test we'll use the mains electricity first. Just to see how, how powerful this is. Now I have filled this pot with around 500 milliliters of water. This is at room temperature. And I have put a small clock there to show you how long it's going to take. In this dial, we can see how many, how many watts we are using uh, during cooking. So let's on this. Just with a touch of a button. And there you go. We are starting to cook at 1300 watts. Let's see how long it's taking for the water to come to a rolling boil. Remember the benefits here. Ease of cleaning, no toxic gases involved. You can use direct solar electricity. Yeah, I think the water is starting to become hot. Yeah. And we have come to a rolling boil. So this is how long it takes at 1300 watts to come to a rolling boil. This is much faster than a gas stove. 
Okay, now we'll stop it. Okay, so now we saw how long it took to boil from 1300 watts using mains electricity. Now, we'll test it on this small solar power setup. Remember, this is a 1000 watts peak. That means only 500 watts continuous it can output. Uh, and my battery is only 35 amp hours and the solar power input is around 100 watts and it's 12:15 uh, in the afternoon so we'll uh, remove this and put it on a uh, inverter and see how it functions let's on it Now we will start at 200 watts. As you can see, it's handling 200 watts without any problems. Because this is only a 500 watt inverter and the battery is 35 amp hours. Now now we are going to try at 500 watts and see whether the supercapacitors will help in this uh, setup because definitely 500 watts cannot be handled by the battery and the supercapacitors. So let's give it a try. One try, it worked. The next one. And it went into shutdown. This is where, now, even though the inverter can handle it, the battery and the supercapacitor setup just can't deliver the amount of heat, uh, the amount of energy needed for this at 500 watts. It can easily uh, function for 200 watts but not for 500 watts, even though the inverter can handle it. And in this type of situation, supercapacitors have no work at all. They just won't work. Supercapacitors provide energy, the instantaneous energy. Like uh, if you need energy for one to two seconds, they are best at de uh, delivering very high outputs, but not beyond that. If you need it for 3-4 seconds, you need a bigger battery. The supercapacitors just won't work. Okay. If you have any more questions, leave a comment below. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching and uh, share it among your friends.